I'm joined now by Dr. Vincent Raj Kumar, who's with Mayo Clinic. We're here to talk about the Joint ASH FDA Symposium that's coming up on Monday. Uh, Dr. Raj Kumar, thank you so much for joining us. This this session with FDA is is, is very much. It just hasn't happened before. I'm almost speechless because it's something that's very unique to ASH and to the, the medical community. Yes, and it's, it's unprecedented because this is happening in a, in a, at a moment of rapid progress in multiple myeloma. We already had three new drugs approved between 2013 and 2015, and just in the last three weeks, we have three more. So um, this, this special session is called upon because there's we need to provide insight to the physicians on how these three new drug approvals will affect myeloma therapy. Now, uh, the beauty of this, too, is you as a clinician uh, are able to offer some of these insights not only to the FDA, but also to the ASH membership and, and perhaps kind of start the ball rolling on safety and efficacy uh, issues that uh, we, we know will develop over the course of time. Uh, absolutely. Two of the new approvals are monoclonal antibodies, and we have not had a single monoclonal antibody for multiple myeloma in all these years. So one is daratumumab, one is elotuzumab, and they require special ways of administration and we also need to find out what the right populations to use them on. And the third drug that was approved is the first oral proteasome inhibitor that's approved, and that's Ixazomib. And um, our job is to inform the membership on how these three new drugs can be incorporated into the existing treatment paradigm of multiple myeloma, which already has a number of effective drugs. I think the, the current overall survival of multiple myeloma is already 80% at uh, three and four years, and I think it's uh, expected to improve greatly with the arrival of these three new drugs. We're using the term unprecedented, never seen before. Uh, this cooperation between the FDA and clinicians um, is something that, uh, does it give you hope that this is kind of the new wave, if you will? Oh, absolutely. I mean, the FDA in all these approvals has done the right thing. Um, for daratumumab, for example, they've granted accelerated approval. Accelerated approval means that they are willing to approve a drug based on phase two data alone without a randomized trial. And that's because daratumumab was found to be effective in about 30% of patients who had failed everything else for multiple myeloma. So it's of course a breakthrough drug. It uh, worked in patients who had failed lenalidomide, bortezomib, carfilzomib, palmalidomide transplant. And so the FDA has been quick. If you had to wait for a phase three trial to come, that'll take many years and deprive patients of the drug. So it's a great collaboration between academia, industry, the agency, ASH, and uh, it's even better that hot off the press, I mean three weeks, we have three drugs, and the best time to, to learn about how to use these drugs is now. And the timing couldn't be better for the ASH and uh, FDA symposium to happen just weeks after approval. Now, the FDA is also, as I understand it, becoming, I'll use the term liberal, in the sense that uh, they're allowing um, uh, off-label uses as well, uh, or at least allowing you to consider that. Well, the FDA, uh, the, the FDA doesn't allow, the FDA approves, the, approves drugs and uh, with specific indications in mind. Uh, in the United States, physicians do have uh, the liberty of using the drugs off-label if they think that it, will, it is in the best interest of the patient. So we, 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 as clinicians, don't restrict ourselves just to the label because there are circumstances in which we can add the drug to, to regimens that were not on the label or use the drug in indications which are not exactly label identical. And that's because we feel that that kind of treatment will actually help the patient save lives. So it's good that in the United States we are allowed to do that. In other countries you are not able to do that. Is this also opening the door or perhaps the encouragement uh, from the FDA to say, well, we are, are giving you this opportunity, but you need to help us also. We, you need to give us the feedback as, as rapidly as possible so we can assimilate this data? Uh, not only assimilate the data and give feedback, but, but more importantly, we have to conduct the follow-up studies. For example, if daratumumab is approved on a phase two accelerated pathway, we need to finish the phase three trials and show them that what they did was actually the right call, show them that this drug does improve overall survival and post-marketing report all the adverse events that have been seen that were not caught on the first trials. And so it's a great responsibility for the from the physician community as well as from industry to report back to the FDA what, ha what the consequence of these approvals are. Now the symposium on Monday afternoon, is that generated or designed to also generate uh, questions from the audience so uh, there can be some, uh, some interchange? Absolutely, I expect a lot of questions from the audience. I mean, uh, questions are going to be related to how these drugs work, um, 
how do we combine these drugs? What stages of the disease do we use these drugs? What are the future clinical trials that we need to do to make sure that we can really you know, gain more from the drugs by more rational combinations and uh, incorporating these drugs into the current schema of myeloma therapy? These drugs have all been approved right now for previously treated myeloma but they are probably going to play a role in newly diagnosed disease and maintenance as well. So in this session, uh, the way we have envisioned it is that the FDA reviewers are going to present the data that led to the approval of daratumumab, elotuzumab, and ixazumab. And then I will be discussing uh, how these approvals might affect the current treatment of patients with newly diagnosed myeloma and in the maintenance therapy setting. And Dr. Paul Richardson from the Dana-Farber Cancer Institute will discuss how these drugs can be best used in the relapsed refractory setting. So I think we'll give a whole, uh, um, a full view on, on, on the impact of these approvals and how best clinicians and the ASH membership can use them in day-to-day uh, -day clinical practice.